guys and welcome back to my channel. In today's video we're gonna make a wrap dress which is actually a topic that you guys decided on on my Instagram stories. I did a small poll the last week I guess. So that's what we're gonna do today. This is a very very long video. I'm very sorry about that. I'm gonna put a timestamp right here for everybody who is not that interested in the construction because this is basically this video is split into two sections constructing the dress and then making the dress as well both take about the same time in this video so I do understand if you're just here to see how I make the dress so feel free to skip ahead obviously I'm very very happy if you'd stay for the construction as well because I thought I might change it up a bit and not drape this time I will be doing a construction on the table so if you're interested in that keep on watching and with that out of the way let's just jump right into the video <sighs> it always feels so weird when I post a video without you know this vlog kind of style without me sewing anything and like it feels like it's been a minute you know it's only been a week but okay <laughs> today we're going to make um, a wrap dress and I've been sketching a little bit this is what I came up with and you can see right there that it's two different versions of sleeves I just asked you on Instagram um, which one you prefer according to fabric consumption or costs or practicability or whatever else, you know, what is more important to you. Do you would you like a long sleeve that in my opinion looks way better or would you like a dress that doesn't consume as much fabric because long sleeves and puffy sleeves like that consume so much fabric. So that's what I was asking and I'm going to wait a bit on that uh, to start with uh, making the dress in general or the sleeves in general I guess because I can start uh, with the porpoise and then the ruffles are just um, rectangles. This looks to be like a two meter project so a usual dress project with the short sleeves. Might be more with the long sleeves. Anyways we're gonna see about that in the end. I am currently um, procrastinating because I can't motivate myself to start. <laughs> um, okay, let's start. Let's stop this. I'm going to try to make this dress mainly on the table, so I'm not gonna drape this time, just because I wanna keep, um, you know, keep it interesting and not only drape and not only do patterns on the table, so you are able to see both versions. And I will be doing this one based on my basic dress block which you can um, look up on my youtube i have a tutorial on how that works if you're interested you can construct any dress um, block to any size so do that if you're interested in that I hope you can see everything that I have on the table right now. This is just the copied out uh, basic pattern that I constructed in the video that I linked before. And this is pretty body tight. So obviously I don't want that because the fabric is not stretchy and I don't want it to be highly uncomfortable, especially if it's a wrap dress. You wanna give a bit more volume into the whole thing because you're gonna tighten it anyways with the bow tie and I'm gonna do that first of all I want the sleeves to be a bit more comfortable so I'm just gonna put the whole thing down by two centimeters and out by one centimeter and I'm going to draw a new line starting from the spot there for your sleeves and then I'm gonna take out the waistline just a bit so that I can let's do two centimeters here as well go down in a straight line and adjust the width there as well. And I'm gonna do the same thing here on the back as well. Then the next thing is I have this huge dart right here. I obviously don't want that. And I'm gonna go down four centimeters in the side seam and draw a line towards the breast point right there where everything ends into. And I'm gonna cut into the side seam on that line that I just drew just before the breast point and I'm gonna cut into the dart here on the shoulder 
just towards the breast point so that it's still attached, but you can move it. That's making life way simpler. And I'm gonna close this dart up here and opening the same dart in the side seam, which just means that I relocated the dart uh, from the shoulder seam into the side seam. The shape will be intact. That's a common practice. If you do not like the, the placement of a dart, you can just relocate it by making a circle motion basically and opening up the dart somewhere else that fits your design better. So this is what I'm gonna do. And honestly, I think I'm also gonna relocate the waist dart. I can do that because my dart ends in my waist because I, I am cutting my pattern right there. There's gonna be some sort of waist belt gonna sit right here. So I'm not gonna have the mirror dart which goes towards the hip which opens up there anymore so I can also relocate my waist dart. Since we close the dart up here, the shoulder dart, we can draw the v-line. I marked the, the spot right here from my bust line and it's like going a bit weirdly here because we closed the dart. It's like doing this weird shape but that doesn't really matter. The point is that here is my bust line. So it's gonna sit like somewhere somewhere here, right? We can look at the dress form. This is the point that I'm talking about. Now this is fairly low, so I don't want to have my V come all the way to here. So we're just gonna put it like somewhere up, not too high up, but like maybe five to six centimeters up. And then also we want to make the neck cut out a tiny bit bigger here. And how we're gonna do the wrapping part, I'm gonna show you in just a second. It's pretty straightforward to be honest. Okay, so this is the V. And then also I drew the shoulder spot right here pretty high up, like pretty much into the shoulder. I guess I'm gonna relocate the spot here as well because I want to have a fairly narrow shoulder seam on my dress. So I'm gonna make it smaller by three centimeters. I have three, four and five. And this one right here, I am also gonna end in my in my sleeve point. Yeah, and that's all that I'm gonna do for the front piece. Now, obviously we're gonna have to do the same on the back. This whole thing, this whole situation I explained in my ultimate coat guide. It's not a coat only thing. So this is a general thing that I explained in my guide. So if you wanna know how this works in detail, have a look at that. I am explaining this and so many other things, not only referring to coats, as I just said, these are more or less generally uh, applicable on different garments as well, but mostly it's on coats, that's why I uh, put it in there. And what we can do right now, we can take the start like out, Kinda. This is a pretty big dart, so it's like 4.5 centimeters. We don't really need 4.5 centimeters as a dart in the back to begin with. So we're just gonna cross this out and go in, let's do 2.5 centimeters in the side seam right here. And then also here, since the side seam angle changed pretty drastically because of that, I'm also gonna draw a 90 degree angle right there just for the sleeve to still fit. So this is the general changes that I'm gonna make on paper. So I'm also um, gonna do the sleeve really quickly because while I'm at it, why not? And the main thing that you need to change for the sleeves is how much you narrow the shoulder. So in my case, I went in three centimeters. So you need to go up three centimeters. So this is basically the direction that it goes. Um, the sleeve is gonna sit right here, right? So I went in three centimeters. So there used to be three centimeters right here. And this is the amount I have to go out in my case right here. And then also I went down two centimeters and out one centimeter. So this is also what I have to do right here. I have to go down two centimeters and out one centimeter in order to make up for whatever I did here. It's the same thing basically. And then I can also draw my sleeve shape in a nice way. We're gonna spread, cut and spread the sleeve here so that we're gonna have, I wanna have some folds in here. 
and more volume. This one is a very tight sleeve, so we are not gonna have this as the end result, I guess. But uh, in general, you just have to copy exactly the same changes that you did for your sleeve in the bodice that you need to do for the sleeve itself, obviously. So if you do, if you narrow the shoulder from the sleeve cut out, then you also have to make your sleeve cap higher accordingly. And then also with the lower ring, because they also communicate with the sleeves, uh, you also have to do the same thing with the sleeves that you did with the bodice just in general. So this is not the final thing, but we're gonna put it to the side for now and cut out the bodice and make changes, and then we can continue with the sleeve. So, and now that I have the bodice, basically, I can put it on the dress form and fit it pretty easily. Could have also just sewn it, but... Mm -hmm. So this has a uh, one centimeter seam allowance in the front, so we're gonna overlap it by two centimeters. And this also has one centimeter seam allowance on it. I'm seeing it right now already. I don't like how high it is. And I think we can take out more here. So this is the 4.5 centimeters start that I didn't put in the back. So maybe I have to do that. Um, we're gonna see about that. And then also, I feel like there could be a tiny bit more taken out of the sleeves here because it's popping open a bit. You can see it right here, it's like going out and it doesn't really look that nice. So we can make a small thing right here and take it and put it into the dart that we already have right there. So now I'm gonna lower the neckline to the point that I actually want it, which was down here. So it's gonna be somewhat like this. What we're gonna do here with the V line, we are also gonna continue this line down to wherever we wanna end the wrapping part of the dress because you're gonna have to do that in kind of a round shape. And this part of the left side of the bodice, this is gonna be the one that's gonna be above and then the same thing is gonna be underneath on this side going to the other seam where there will be a hole for the string to come out and then you can tie it up. So now we're just gonna continue and uh, put some darts in here. I think apart from that, everything looks quite nice. So we're gonna leave it like that. I just edited 15 minutes and the mic wasn't on. I'm very sorry about the bad audio quality. I uh, fixed it now, now, obviously. My mic was out of battery, so. I'm very sorry about that. I hope it was not too awful to listen to the camera inbuilt audio. Anyways, at least you were able to hear anything, you know, like at least something. Let's continue. My fabric actually arrived today during the day. This is what it looks like. Have a look at this gorgeous linen rayon mi mix. But it has these amazing uh, applique on, this amazing like stitching on it. And it looks so nice. It's actually really nice like falling in a very nice way. I was a bit skeptical on how it's gonna fall um, because it looked to be a bit stiffer than what I would prefer for a dress like that because it's it has a lot of ruffles on the skirt part and it would like, you know, flare out a lot if the fabric would be too stiff, which might also be a look if you wanna go for that. But in this specific case, I had hoped for a rather thin uh, linen fabric because it is linen and linen tends to be on the more stiffer side. Anyways, this one right here actually seems to be perfect <laughs> in uh, terms of stiffness. So I'm quite happy with that. And I just absolutely adore the stitching on this one because a lot of you guys 
keep asking me um, on my different videos where I am getting my fabric from, I will link it directly in the description box. So I prepared my pattern piece right here for the sleeve. I've decided to try both versions, the long and the short sleeve, even though the short sleeve won by like two thirds or something. But let's see. I have my door open. There was just like a fly coming in that really scared me for a second. I already said that in the very beginning, I want my pattern piece to be very wide because I want to put some folds into my cap right here, into my sleeve cap. So what I do for that is I am drawing some lines, dividing the pattern in a number. In this case, I divided it into four pieces, cut into the pattern three times. And I'm also going to cut over there as well so that you can spread it apart and then put an amount of uh, paper in between it so you make the whole sleeve just very big. And what I'm going to do with this sleeve actually, I'm not gonna do parallel bands of paper into the sleeve. I am actually gonna do like triangular shapes because I wanna have more volume at the bottom than in my shoulders. The short sleeve version is just gonna be simple enough it's going to be the same cap, same everything, but then at some point I'm going to draw a line here and you can decide for yourself which one you like or you prefer, which one you'd like to make for your dress. And yeah, so let's do that. Okay, now that I have all of this <laughs> going on right now, I have to put in my folds. And for that, I first of all need to measure my sleeve seams in my front and back piece. And now the remaining area right here needs to get folded so that it fits into the sleeve seam that is right here. So also measuring everything. So I have 45.7 as the whole length measure from this spot right here. So half of that would be 22.85. And that's just what I'm gonna measure to see the shoulder point. So it's almost there. That was pretty good actually. My point that I just um, eyed <laughs> right there. So this is my shoulder point, not this. And from this point on, I have to make both sides fold it down to 16.2, 16.4. So I have 6.65 centimeters on this side, too much. So I'm just gonna do, I think, just one centimeter folds, to be honest. And one centimeter folds are always taking up two centimeters in total. I can do three in the front and four in the back. So I'm actually gonna do a one centimeter distance between the folds as well. So three lines are one fold basically. This point right here is gonna fold to this point and then there's gonna be one centimeter free. And then again, three lines. So this point is gonna fold to this point once
for the one I just made. Those are the folds up here. They just look so cute. And the sleeve actually makes the fit on this side perfect. Like there is no gaping, no nothing. Everything is like nice. This doesn't open up, which is good because of the weight of the sleeve. Actually, this holds it close. I'm gonna give you the option to do short and long sleeve, honestly. And I'm just gonna draw a line right here for you to have an elastic and to singe in your sleeve if you want to do a short sleeve. But apart from that, this pattern is done. I can start with the fashion fabric and it's going to be a lot of ruffles. I'm excited. So I've got everything prepared now. So prepared in the sense of I have my cuffs right here. They have interfacing right here, so they are stabilized. Then I also went ahead and put some seam tape on the front wrapping part and then also on the back neck. Oh, and then also on my waistband that I also cut out as well and almost forgot. <laughs> so the first thing that we're actually gonna do is prepare our sleeves. And I wanna iron all of the folds facing the front. So what that means is that I need to actually fold them um, from the right side of the fabric to the front. If you fold them from this side, you need to fold them to the back. So always turn them to the right side of the fabric. And I'm going to sew over top of that just to keep everything in place. And while I'm doing that, I'm also going to um, ruffle up the lower corner of my sleeve. You can either do that if you have a foot like me, a ruffle foot, a gathering foot. You can do that with that. Or most of you, I would assume, don't have a ruffle foot, which is totally fine. I also didn't have one up until like a month ago or something like that. I don't remember, probably a bit longer. Um, but it's not standard is what I'm saying. There's obviously a technique for everybody who doesn't have a ruffle foot, which is pretty easy as well. You just sew once, you can optionally sew twice, just makes ruffles a bit more even, I would say. I prefer sewing twice. Uh, with the biggest stitch of your machine and you don't back tack either in the beginning or at the end of your stitch so that everything can be pulled because that's exactly what you're gonna do. You're gonna search for either the, the bottom thread or the upper thread, doesn't matter. Choose one of each on both sides and just pull on those. That is just a thing that people um, keep ask, kept asking me because I am using my ruffling foot and not doing this technique. This is how you would do it without the ruffle foot. So I just fixed the shoulder part into place. The next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to put the darts in every piece. And then once I've done that, I'm actually gonna put the shoulder seams together. Not yet the side seams because I wanna put the sleeves into the top part first before I do the side seams. So I'm gonna put the darts in, then the shoulder seams, and I'm gonna overlock in between stages as well. I have the 
bands right here that I want to use for the wrapping purposes of this dress. These are 115 centimeters long. I'm going to have all of the numbers in my pattern, obviously. These are going to get sewn onto the corner right here. And I will be folding the upper corner and stitching it down. And down here, this is still seam allowance. So we actually want to make this band come out one centimeter higher than the lowest edge down here. So what I do for that is I fold the corner right here inward like this so that this corner measures two centimeters. So my seam allowance doubled. Then I'm going to put my band in here and fold this down one centimeter. This leaves me with one centimeter seam allowance down here on this corner, which I can then use to uh, sew my uh, waistband into place. So I'm gonna have this on both sides now, and I'm gonna sew the whole upper corner at around five millimeters, let's see. It's the next day. I hope to finish the dress today. There's not much that still needs to be, to be done. I just need to finish the other sleeve and then just sew the skirt on. So let's hope for the best. And I'm gonna finish the sleeve that's still open. Same thing that I did with the other one. I'm just gonna um, sew the side seams together now. And the cuffs are wide enough actually to fit my hand through. So I, I bet yours do too. And um, yeah, then we're gonna do the skirt. I have to cut out the skirt again because I did a mistake. That was dumb, but anyways, we have enough fabric still left. <laughs> I also went ahead and fixed the cuffs into place, so I just top stitched it basically. This is what it looks from the inside. I norm Normally, you would fold this to the inside and then pin it down and then top stitch it from the outside. I don't do this because this is way, way easier, way faster and it's overlocked anyway, so nothing's gonna happen and nothing's gonna fray. It's just a matter of preference, I guess. And in my case, this is just the faster method. So this is how I do it. I just fold it and then just top stitch it from the outside. Next thing is my belt. So in the dress itself, there's gonna be a hole in the side seam where the string comes out. And this hole is sitting in the middle of the belt so that the belt is where the string is being tied together. It sits in the middle then. Therefore, in the side seams, there needs to be seams on both sides and holes on both sides, depending on how you want to put the dress together and then also for functionality, obviously. And then sew it together with a hole, leaving a hole in the side seam, and that's gonna be where our string is gonna get pulled through.
So I just put the top part of the dress on um, just to see how it fits and I also tied it and this is what it looks like. I am totally in love with the sleeves honestly. They look so so piratey and so cool like they're so big. I love it. Um, a few people pointed out can you please do one that doesn't gape open here in the front and Honestly, there's not that much that can, you can do against it other than have a higher V-line, let's say that. So mine right here doesn't gape open, but if you were to do this, you could like a little bit see into it, I guess. Not a big deal to me at least. Uh, how this looks like but as you can see right here this doesn't really do anything to begin with on my body yours might be different and then it's just a matter of sewing a mock-up putting it on seeing how it fits on you and then adjusting so this is a thing that's very individual and I can't make a pattern that fits everybody everybody and yeah but this is the best I can do right now offer you this which on me at least looks like it's doing the trick so these are my three layers for my skirt this is my shortest then the middle one and then the longest I had to um, play around a bit and like try to make something because my fabric wasn't enough to correct my mistake but I just put the, the panels that were too small basically together and uh, I hope for the best now I hope it's gonna you know lay nicely but what can I do I don't have enough fabric anymore so this is what I ended up with and I think I'm just gonna go and gather a whole bunch I'm gonna do this with my gathering foot I'm not gonna do that by hand And that's it for today's video I hope you enjoyed I am so in love with the dress I'm gonna show you in just a second but before that I just quickly wanted to uh, ask you guys to hit the subscribe button if you like my channel and if you're interested in seeing more videos like that and do hit the bell because then you get notified any time that I post I do post on Sundays and also if you enjoyed this video give this video a like and leave a comment down below if you have a suggestion which I should do next time I am reading every comment so I would be very happy to see some suggestions down there and also follow me on my Instagram or my socials in general. The handle is the same on every social that I have, TikTok, Instagram, you name it. And I am sharing lots of behind the scenes footage on my Instagram stories and I do polls. So if you like to be part of this whole uh, decision making and the process in general, feel free to follow me on Instagram and to uh, click into my stories because that's where I share most of that. And with that, I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching again and I'm gonna see you next Sunday. Bye guys!